Hello guys, welcome to lesson 3, Covalent Molecular and Network. Today we are continuing our bonding and properties unit with a very brief lesson on covalent molecular and network substances. Although it is a brief lesson, it is important that anything we cover today you understand. So if you don't, please get in touch with myself, Mrs Grimes or your own teacher Reach out, let us know, and we will do our best to make it make sense for you. So our learning intention for today is to determine the difference between covalent molecular and network substances. So if you are successful, you'll be able to explain the differences and what makes a covalent molecule and a covalent network different. Later on, we're going to have a look at the properties and because you understand the differences between molecules and networks, you are going to be able to describe how the properties or why the properties rather are different to each other. Now, before we jump in to what is a molecule, what is a network, I first want to clarify that a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons between two non-metal atoms. Your negatively charged electrons, shown here in red, are attracted to the positive nuclei, shown in black, of both atoms. And those nuclei are positive because they contain positively charged protons. Now this diagram on here is only one way of representing a covalent bond. Another way of representing a covalent bond is through a projection diagram that we looked at in the last lesson on molecular shapes. So in one of these diagrams our covalent bonds are represented by these lines here. So these connecting lines between oxygen and hydrogen on either side of the molecule are your covalent bonds. Now what you've got to understand about covalent bonds is that they are incredibly strong bonds. They exist within the molecules, which means they are what hold that molecule together. So covalent bonds hold one oxygen to two hydrogens and create a water molecule. Very strong bonds are very, very difficult to break. Now, water doesn't just exist as one single water molecule. In a glass of water, you have millions of water molecules floating around. They are all held together very weakly by something called an intermolecular bond. An intermolecular bond hold one molecule of water to another. They exist between the molecules. So covalent bonds are within the molecules. They hold the molecule together. So they would hold together, if we go back here, these covalent bonds are holding the water molecule together. They are intramolecular bonds. Now, one molecule of water is held to another molecule of water by intermolecular bonds. These are much, much weaker. For you right now, they don't have names. You just call them intermolecular bonds. Now, there are two types of covalent substance. They are covalent network substances and covalent molecular substances. And I'm going to kick off talking about covalent molecular substances. So on the screen in front of me, I have three covalent molecules. I have three molecules of methane, CH4. Now, each molecule is distinct and separate from another. It is held together by four covalent bonds. These covalent bonds within the molecule are very, very strong. Now, these molecules of methane are held or attracted to each other, pulled together by something called an intermolecular force. Now, these exist between the molecules. They pull them towards each other. And they are very, very weak. So what I want you to remember, covalent, mo covalent bonds, very strong. Intermolecular forces, very, very weak. Okay, 
Covalent bond strong, intermolecular force weak. So, covalent molecular substances. Now these exist as small molecules. And the atoms in the molecule are bonded covalently by sharing unpaired electrons. So oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, these are covalent bonds. They are formed by sharing electrons, the same in ammonia. Nitrogen has three covalent bonds here to three hydrogen atoms. Carbon has a double bond here to oxygen, double bond to another oxygen. And it is covalent bonds that hold all of these molecules together. Now, one carbon dioxide molecule is attracted to another molecule of carbon dioxide by weak forces of attraction called intermolecular forces. Now, diatomic elements, so hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those are examples of covalent molecular structures, as are compounds such as water, carbon dioxide, methane and ammonia. They are all covalent molecular. So, to summarise again, covalent molecular substances exist as small molecules. The atoms that make up the molecule are covalently bonded together and the molecules themselves are held together by weak forces of attraction. That is your covalent molecular substances. Your covalent network, on the other hand, are slightly different. They still involve non-metal atoms. However, each non-metal atom is bonded to another via a covalent bond. So these substances form giant networks of atoms that are covalently bonded together. The element carbon, boron and silicon all have this structure of atoms. Now diamond, which some of you may be familiar with, is a form of carbon and it has this network structure. Silicon dioxide is another good example and a popular example with the SQA of a covalent network substance. Silicon carbide is another and these are compounds that have this network arrangement of atoms. Now within the network the atoms have a tetrahedral arrangement. So covalent networks, intermolecular forces do not come into it. In a covalent network the atoms are all held together by covalent bonds. So, I told you this lesson was going to be really, really brief. What I would like you to do now is use the PowerPoint that I have just run through and summarise covalent molecular and covalent networks in your jotter. So you should take the title covalent molecular and covalent network. Your first heading should be molecular. Summarise covalent molecular structure. Second heading, network. Summarise covalent network substances. After you've done that and you have taken the, the time or the opportunity rather to ask me any questions that you have, you should complete the molecular network quiz. So I'm going to run over this one more time. Our covalent molecular substances exist as small molecules. The atoms that make up the molecule are covalently bonded together. Now between each molecule, so between one molecule of water and another, there are weak forces of attraction. Your diatomic elements, like hydrogen and fluorine, are examples of covalent molecules. So two hydrogen atoms would be covalently bonded together. And between one hydrogen molecule and another, there are weak forces of attraction. The same can be said for all of the diatomics as well as ammonia, methane and water and carbon dioxide as well. On the other hand, 
Covalent network substances are held together purely by covalent bonds. So carbon or diamond, boron, silicon, they are all held together by covalent bonds. Each atom is connected to another by a covalent bond. Intermolecular forces are not involved at all. Each atom and a covalent network is held together by covalent bonds. So read over this as many times as you have to. Take your note in your jotter, molecular network, and when you are quite happy that you understand, complete the molecular and network quiz. I will see you all for lesson four. Bye guys.